So let's look at a, a scenario where there's a rights issue. It's slightly different from a bonus issue. Uh, we still have to increase the pre-rights issue issue uh, with a bonus fraction. Um, but the way it's calculated is slightly more complicated. Um, let's take a quick look at this example. Uh, the figures are the same. Uh, the initial figures. So there's 10,000 in issue at the beginning of the year. There's a full market issue, uh, market value issue of 5,000 on the 1st of July, which will give a total issue of 15,000. And a rights issue on the 1st of September, so that's July, August, and then 1st of September, two months afterwards, uh, of another 5,000, which will bring the total to 20,000. Uh, we can do the time element, which is uh, easy as before. It's 6 over 12 for the first period. 6 over 12. Uh, the next issue of 5,000 was in effect uh, for two months, July and August, before the rights issue. So that's 2 over 12. And then the rights issue itself, 1st of September, so that's all of September, all of uh, September, October, November and December, so that's four months, four twelfths of the year. So that's that section done. So now we just need to look at the bonus fraction, uh, and what number do we put in here? Well, it's slightly different for the uh, rights issue. Uh, and we calculate it like this. If we just do a quick example, say the bonus issue was um, uh, uh, one for five at a price of four pounds when the market value was uh, ten pounds. So that's why it's called a rights issue. The existing shareholders get a right to buy a, a new share at lower than market rates, uh, which will ideally um, entice them into becoming a further shareholder. And for every five shares they get, they're allowed, I've written bonus there, it's rights, rights issue, uh, for every five shares they hold, they can get one new share for four pounds. So let's just take a look at these examples. Uh, so if I had, uh, if I owned five shares, uh, which were worth, let's just tidy these up. If I owned five shares, uh, which would be worth £10 each, that would be a total of £50 of value. And I can get one rights issue share for those five at a price of only £4, which gives a total of £4. So that would be my total holding as a rights issue holder if I um, accepted that offer for rights. Um, if I took them up I would have five of my own shares at £10 and I'd have one share at £4. Five, I'm offered one for five. So that gives a total of £54 of value I would have given to the company. So that's 50 plus 4. And I would have a total of five share, uh, six shares, uh, and what that would mean is that my uh, the equivalent value would be fifty four. This amount here divided by the number of shares I hold, which is nine. So what I've done there is I've divided the total holding after I've made my rights purchase of 54, I would hold a total of six 
uh, 6 shares. So 54 divided by 6 gives me a, a pr theoretical price of 9 for my entire holding. And that makes sense because I've got 5 at £10, 1 at £4. So I'm kind of doing a weighted average gives uh, a theoretical price of 9. And this is called the... Uh, it's not going to fit there. I'll write it here. Theoretical X rights price. The TERP. Um, so that's the theoretical X rights price. If I accepted the rights issue, uh, it would be £9. Uh, and the bonus fraction, which is why we're doing this whole uh, whole thing, uh, is equal to the market value of the price over the theoretical x rights price, which means the bonus fraction is uh, market value was 10 divided by 9. 1.11. Let's just reduce that down a bit. 1.11. And that's our bonus fraction, which we can then finally, after all this, put in here 1.11 and 1.11. So we use that just to boost the value of the pre rights issued shares. And then, as before, we multiply across. So it's 10,000 in issue times 6 over 12 for the months of the year we had 10,000 in issue times 1.11, which gives us 5,555 and a bit. Uh, we can reduce these down in a bit. Uh, this is 15,000 times, oops, times 2 over 12 times and again times 1.11 gives 277 and the rights issue itself doesn't have a bonus fraction so it's 20,000 in issue for 4 out of the 12 months gives is that right? times 20,000 times 4 twelfths gives 666.6666 um, and very conveniently there we go uh, this sums up to 15,000 so after all these calculations the weighted average is 15,000 so we can put that into our EPS figure. Uh, what was the sum? It was profit after tax minus the irredeemable preference shares gives 11,000. And this is divided by the weighted average shares in issue, 15,000, which gives a sum of 11 over 15. Uh, of 73 pence. So that's our EPS for the period. So a slightly more complex this, let's just go through it again. Um, we had to work out this theoretical X rights price uh, and we did that by taking a, a, a weighted average of the price had we subscribed to the rights issue. It was 1 for 5. Here are the rights um, details. 1 for 5 at £4 when the market value was £10. So here's our, assume we had 5 shares at £10 each. That would have been a total of 50. This is a little theoretical working. We would have had 1 rights share for £4 would have been worth £4. Uh, which would have given us a total holding of £54 for six shares, one divided by the other, 54 divided by six, 
gives us a theoretical price after the rights issue of nine pounds per share and that makes sense because it's between ten and four uh, we had five at ten pounds and one at four pounds so it's a again a weighted average of those two prices um, and the bonus fraction is given by the uh, market value over the theoretical X rights price which is uh, 10 pounds over 9 pounds I can just write that in here which equals 10 pounds over 9 pounds uh, which gives us the answer of 1.11 and then we bring that figure up here just make a note of where these are coming from 1.11 comes from there uh, and we multiply across so 10,000 times 6 over 2 times the bonus fraction is that and this is 15,000 times 2 over 12 times the bonus fraction is 2777 uh, and this doesn't have the bonus fraction, it's the rights issue on its own, 2,000 for 4 out of the 12 months, sorry, 20,000 for 4 out of the 12 months, gives 6666, uh, giving us a total weighted average issue of 15,000. And then we just put that into our EPS calculation, uh, which I'll just highlight with a bit of a highlight. So the EPS is 11,000 uh, which is the profit after tax minus the irredeemable preference shares all divided by the total weighted average shares and I can just highlight those so you can see where those have come from. Uh, and that gives us a figure of 73 pence for our EPS with a rights issue.